This is Richard Malone from CNX. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the customer dashboard example. This is a Nitro app that's included with Valence as an example. And let me just start by going into the finished product here to see what uh, we're going to create, what it looks like. And you can see we have uh, customers on this dashboard are listed by their country. And over here on the, the list, we can see uh, the number of countries is in descending order. And we also have that in pie chart form here. I can click on one of these pies and see the detail. And the little map will come up here and we can see on the map where all the customers are on the map. I can click one of these markers and see the customer name. And over here we have what, we're, what are called key performance indicators. This is a total number of customers for that country and total number of sales that we have in that country. And uh, I can use this back button to go back and choose a different country. There's France, for example. And I can go back and I can also click on the grid. So I can either click on the pie or the grid. That does the same thing. Okay, there we go. So let me go out of here and we'll go into the Nitro App Builder. And we'll, we'll create a second copy of this. And I'll go through the whole process so you can see how it's done. So we'll launch the Nitro App Builder. Uh, just I want to just make a note here that when you go into this little uh, configure cog wheel here to see the existing examples that are included with Valence, you need to click this button. And then you can see data sources and widgets and app records that are part of our example set. Uh, but we let you turn that off so it doesn't interfere or uh, create messiness in your list of items. So the first thing we need to do for this app is to create a data source and we're going to create a data source to get our top countries customers and the customer master file that we're going to use is demo cmast that's a demo customer master file that we use a lot uh, for doing demos and so that's the first step we'll choose the file demo cmast we're only going to use this one file for this data source so we don't have any file joins uh, when we go to columns we were, are going to choose the country and then we're also going to choose the count all right because we want to count the number of records by country and we're also going to add a filter we don't want to include any customer records that do not have a country assigned to them so in the filters we'll choose country and we'll say not equal to and we can leave this blank to say country not equal to blank and we'll go next group by is being selected for me automatically because I had a count field so we're going to group by the country and then we're going to order by the count in descending order because most importantly in my in my list or my grid that I'm going to show I want to list the countries the, the top number of countries first and then going down from there so let's preview that data source and this is what the data looks like that looks correct to me so we'll go ahead and save this data source. We'll put customer top countries. And I'm just going to put a tag of video. Putting tags helps you find these components as you create them. So you can put more than one tag on there if you want. But in this case, I'm just going to put the one tag. And we'll save that. All right, so now we have a data source that will allow me to get the top countries. And remember, on our final product, we have a pie chart and we have a grid. So now is when we attach widgets to this data source. We'll create a widget. And the first thing we want is a pie chart. And the data field for this pie chart is going to be my account. And then the label field is going to be the country. And as we start making choices here, we'll see the pie chart come in on the canvas with the data source uh, supplying the data for it. Now I want to limit the results. I'm going to limit the results to 10 so that I it, the pie chart looks nicer. And then I'm also going to go to the UI configuration here and I'm going to put a little donut hole effect in the center. I think that looks better. And then I'll also put some padding around the outside. You can see here that the country name gets cut off because the, the pie chart goes right to the edge of the canvas. So if we put some padding around the outside there'll be enough room to show the names. Okay, there we go. I think that's all we need to do on this one. Uh, we could add filters or custom formatting, but we don't need to do that in this case. So we'll just go ahead and save that. 
and we'll put customers top 10 pie and the tag will be video I'll tag all of these components the same and we'll save that so now we have our data source of top countries and we have a pie chart attached to it now the grid or the list of countries can also be attached to the same data source so I'll add another widget and in that this case I'll choose a grid and we'll take both the count and the country as soon as I start choosing columns you'll see a preview come up here on the bottom and I can see I, I want my country first and then the count so I can grab this column and just drag it and move it ahead of the other one and so now I should get my country first and then the rows and I'm gonna give these two columns equal weighting so I'll reduce this number so now when these are both one each of the column will get equal weighting so that we have the same amount of room and I also want to change the labels we'll call this uh, country make it simple the labels are originally coming from the file definition and sometimes they're just too long or not appropriate and we'll put uh, customer count so we have the country and the customer count as our new labels I also think it might look better to center the customer count I think that's how it's done in the original example if I go on this screen you can see a better view of it oh I just noticed this list is not going to be very long so we don't need to have the paging grid or the I'm sorry the paging controls so we can turn those off by default they're on so we can just make it a load all grid so now we won't have those paging controls okay so this grid widget looks good we'll go ahead and save that top customers grid save okay so now we have a data source of top countries and we have a pie and a list now we have enough components to start our app so if I now move to, over to this app section I can then create the app I'll create a new app and now it's asking me what is the first widget I want to put onto this apps canvas so the first thing I'll put on is the pie chart then you can see the pie chart has come onto the canvas and now I'll go right ahead and add another widget when the only one we have left that's not on here yet is the customer grid by default they come one on top of the other and I can use these arrows here to move this one up next to the pie chart so now we have them left and right and that's how we want it and I'm gonna uh, click on the settings of each of these to adjust the margins you see this margin here by default I'm getting 16 pixels around each widget and I only want I want there to be a total of 16 here but they're adding together and becoming 32 so on this one I'll adjust the right margin to be 8 and on this one I'll adjust the left margin to be 8 so that when added together they equal 16 and now you can see it's equal space all around that'll look nicer I'll give the the app now on the, the title of the app bar uh, we'll put uh, customer dashboard and we'll put uh, video just so we can distinguish it from the final or from the original and uh, that's all we're going to do with this for now we're going to come back and add more widgets and add some behaviors later but for now let's save this and just make sure it's operational I'll leave it non-categorized this screen is just asking how I want to deploy this within the portal I'll just take all the defaults and click save now if I go back to my launch pad I should have a new app there and here it is customer dashboard video now I could go into portal administration and give it a prettier icon make it look like this icon and change the the title or whatever I want but for our purposes of the video we'll just leave this alone and launch it and to see if it works at this point so it looks good here's my pie chart there's my list one thing I can notice right away is that in my original the pie chart was wider and my list over here on the right side was skinnier and used less width so I'll jump back to Nitro App Builder and I'll go back into the app definition and I'll adjust this widget to have more width you can see when I move that to a flex of 2 it now gives a 2 weighting to the width of this widget 
and a one weighting of the width of this widget. So it works out to be sort of two thirds of the screen gets the pie chart and one third of the screen gets the list. So now we'll save that and check it again. I'm just going to refresh the app. Reload frame. <clears throat> can do that in Chrome. And now it looks more like the original. Okay, so now the next thing we'll do is in the original when we when we click on one of these pie slices or the grid, I was getting a map and, uh, and some other key indicators. So let's work on the map so that when I click on one of these countries, I get the map. So we'll jump back to Nitro App Builder. And I want to create some new data sources and widgets before I go back and add them to my app. So for the map widget, I need a new data source that's going to include the customer address. I did not have that information in my top countries. And this is grouped by country count. So this data source is not good for this purpose. So I'm going to create another data source. And it's going to be from the same file, demo CMAST. I don't have any files to join. And I'm going to choose the columns. I'm just going to choose all columns. I'm not going to use all of them, but for speed, I'm just going to choose all the columns. And I don't even need to be concerned about how it's ordered by or anything like that. I'll just jump right to preview and see that this is just records of all of my customer records. So we'll save that and I'll just call it cust all, like for all customers. And we'll tag that and save it. So now I have a data source listing all my customers with all of their information, including their address information. And we'll create a widget from that. And now what I want is a map. So there's the map widget. And this is very easy. You simply select the fields from the data source that match what you would send or type in the Google map. So if you've used Google maps before, you know, you can try type an address and a city state and zip. But in this case, we're going to choose like address line one city state and the country. And we're mostly concerned about the country, but if we include all of these things and you can see here, the map is starting to generate. And it, it looks like it's accurate to me. Now that while you're in design mode, it's just going to pick four customer records from the database and just show them to you as an example. And uh, I should also note that the first time you use this on your system with Valence, you're going to have to apply a Google Map API. And Valence will prompt you for that and have a button where you can go request an API from Google. Now, Google has some restrictions on how many times you can call this API at no cost per minute. You know, this is great for testing purposes or when you're designing apps, but if you put a, an app into production that uses a map, you should probably look into getting a paid Google Map API key and applying that in Valence. And there's, there's a way to go into Portal Admin and apply that key and Valence will walk you through it the first time you go through there. If you do have any concerns or problems with applying the Google Maps API key, contact support at cnxcorp.com and we will give you some help in applying that. All right, so let's move on. I think that's all we need to do here. Um, oh, we want to have a marker title. That's what happens when you click on one of the marker. What is the information that shows up when you click on a marker? Our original app just had the name come up, so we'll do the same thing here if I click just on the name field. But you can combine other fields together and put more information than just the name, but we'll, we'll keep just the name for now. And we'll save this. And say customer map. And save. So now we're done creating the customer map widget. And there's a couple more widgets we need to create called key performance indicators that had the customer count and total sales dollars. But let's get the map integrated into the app and then we'll come back and do those other two last. So we'll go back into the app section and go into our customer dashboard app. And now what we want to do is we want to create a new section. So when we first put the pie and the grid on, that automatically went into the main section. Every Nitro app has a main section by default. So we'll create another section and we'll call that country. This is the country section. So all the information about a specific country will go in that section. And once I created it, I have now a blank canvas, which I can put more widgets on. So we'll just add the customer map. That's the only one here because that's the only one that's not already part of this app. 
So now the uh, map is on there in the country section. And if we were to save this and go launch the app right now, it would look the same as it did before because we haven't told the Nitro app builder how the user should get from the main pie or grid to the map. And we do that in behaviors. So we'll define our first behavior. So when I click that button, now what has happened is I've gone into a section that sort of gives a, a hierarchical view of the of the app layout. And so we want to look at what widget do we want to start with. So let's work with the pie chart. So if we look and see what's available for the pie chart, we have a chart click action. So here's where we can define what action is going to take place when the user clicks on a segment of the chart. So when I, when I go here, I can say I want to filter another widget, meaning I want to feed what I've clicked on from one widget into another widget. So let's add an action for that. So when I click on the pie chart, I want to update the map. So I'm going to say we're going to update the map. Now the second step is it's asking you what is the field relationship between the widget I'm coming from and the widget I'm going to. And that would be by the country. So when I click on a particular country, I want it to feed that same country into the app that I'm filtering. All right. So now uh, we can also update the, the title. I don't think we're going to do that in this case. We can just leave that blank for now. And we'll save. All right, so we're filtering the customer map when we click the chart. But we also have to say to the app, how are we going to switch to the country section? So we're filtering a widget, but we haven't told it to go from the main section to the country section. So we also have to add a hide show widgets action. So we'll do that and we'll say, here's, so here's the main section and here's the country section. So when the pie chart is clicked, I want to hide the main section. So there's hide, I'm going to hide the main section, and I'm going to show the country section. So we'll save that, and now that's in here. So the definition you can be seen here, this is what I'm hiding, and this is what I'm showing. So that should be enough to test this now. Again, just to recap, when I click the chart, I'm going to filter the information on the map by country, and then I'm going to hide the main section and show the country section. So let's try that. I'm going to save the app. We'll jump over to it, and I'm going to right-click and reload frame. That'll relaunch the app. And then I'll click the country of Germany on the pie, and hopefully the German tags will come up. Yes, perfect. So now that works fine, but look what we have now. I've gotten to the map, but I have no way of getting back. So there's no control to get back. I have to add a button to this level to tell the Nitro App Builder that I want the user to be able to go back. So let's jump to Nitro App Builder and add that now. So we go into the app definition to do that in the behaviors. And we'll do that at the section level. So when the country section is being shown, I want to add a button on that section. And I want, I'm going to look for an icon that's appropriate. And I think the left arrow is most appropriate for that. That's what users are used to seeing to go back. And I don't even need any text on the button. And if I position that in the upper left, that's clear to the user that that means to go back to where they, from where they came from. So now I've added the button onto the section, but look, I'm getting a warning here telling me that there's no action defined. So I have to say, well, what does this button do when I click on it? So I want to hide and show widgets when I click on the button. So I'm going to, in this case, when I click back, I'm going to re-show the main section and then hide the country section. All right. So now I'll have the appearance to the user that I've gone back to the main section. And there's the definition there. And we'll save that. And let's retest the app again. I like to test the app in stages every time I add something. All right. So now we'll go, we'll go back to Germany again. And now here's my arrow. And when I click on the arrow, now I'm going back to the main section. Perfect. We'll go into another country and we can see that we can keep going back and forth now. Now, one of the things that the finished app does is it also applies those same actions over to the grid. So right now, see when I'm clicking on the grid, 
and nothing's happening. I'm not going to cover that in this video. It's the exact same process that I did to add those actions to the pie chart as to add them to the grid. So since it's the same thing, it's not really a value add to take the time to do that in the video. But just know that you can apply the same exact actions to the grid in your application. Okay, lastly, we're going to add the key performance indicators onto this screen. Um, right now, we're just showing the map. And just in case you forgot, I'm going to go back to the original app that we're trying to duplicate, which is this one here. And when I go into a country, you can see over here we have these things we call key performance indicators. So these are the two things we're going to create. And we'll do, we're going to do two new data sources, one for each, and we're going to do two widgets, and then we'll incorporate those into the app. All right, so I'll close this again. And we'll go back to Nitro App Builder and back to data sources and widgets. And let's create the data source for the customer count. And this is going to be an easy one. This is just going to be demo CMAST again. And when I go to columns, I'm just going to choose the count and really nothing else. And I should get 210. There's 210 records in that file. So that's all I want from this data source. So I'm just going to save that straight away. And we'll just put cus count. And then I'm going to attach the widget to it right away. So there's the customer count data source and we'll create the widget. And this is a key performance indicator, single KPI. And we're going to choose the, the data field is going to be the count field. And we should get a preview here. And the label is going to be total customers. Now in the app we're trying to replicate, the number 210 was in blue. So we'll change that over here in the color section. Default background will be this blue color. And if we jump back, we can now see that it's blue. So that looks perfect. So I'll save that. Can't, we'll call it customer count KPI. Save that. Okay, the final data source we're going to do for this app is for the total sales. And this one's going to be a little bit trickier with the data source. So we're going to do demo CMAST. That's the customer master file. And then we're also going to add, since we're trying to get total sales dollars, we have to get to the order file detail. And to get there, we need to also add the demo ord h file, which is the header file. And then there's also a detail file called demo ord d. And we're going to have to join these files together. The data we want is really in the detail file, but we have to join these three together to get down to that level. So let's go to the file joins. And our first mapping is going to be mapping the primary file of demo CMAS to the order header file. That's done by the customer number. So we'll define the relationship here. The from field and the to field will be from customer to customer. So there's the definition. And now we're also going to add a mapping to map the order number from the header file to the order number of the detail file. And there's our mapping there. And so we'll go next. And now the columns available are from all three files now. But I, I don't even want any of these columns by themselves. I want to create a calculated field. And the fields I'm going to use to calculate a field are the order quantity and the price. So I need to multiply the order quantity times the price to get the total dollars. So what I'll do is create a calculation field. And I'm going to call it total. And we'll call it, this label will be uh, total sales. And then uh, the, this is where I'm going to specify the calculation. But I'm going to go find the fields that I want. Oh, I went by them. So it's the order quantity and the price. When I click on them, it'll come over here into this work area. And I want to use SQL syntax here to sum the order quantity times the price on all of the records that are selected. And that'll give me my total sales. So that's the total sales. Uh, that's the only column that I'm going to create is this calculated field. And when I preview that, I'm just going to get one total. Now we're going to later come through and filter this by country, but that's going to be done at the widget level. 
So this is all I need to do at the data source level. So we'll save that. Cust total sales, we'll call this. Okay, so now we have the customer total sales data source and we'll add our key performance indicator widget to that. The label will be total sales and we'll choose the total sales column that we did in the calculation and we'll change the color to blue like the other one. Just double check, it looks good. You know, I'm also going to add some formatting since we know this is a number or I'm sorry, um, a currency. Click this little cogwheel here and we'll choose that it is a money format in US dollars. And we'll just make sure that renders properly. That looks good. And we'll save this. Customer total, total sales key performance indicator video. And we'll save that. All right, so now we have the two key performance indicators, one for uh, the count and one for the total sales. So now we can go back to the app, go into the definition. We're going to add this to the country section. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a widget here. Now we want to, we want to stack these key performance indicator widgets top and bottom. So we're going to add a special widget first called a utility widget for a vertical layout. And we can give, just give this a name for reference purposes. We'll call it KPIs for key performance indicators. And we'll bring this widget up alongside to the right of the map. And right away, before I forget, I'm going to give the map more width because we only need a small amount of space for the key performance indicator widgets here on the right. And then now that I have this container, which I can load things vertically into, I'll add widgets right into that container. And the first one will be the count. And the second one will be the sales. And there we go. So I'm going to take a moment here to align these margins like I did before. So in this one, I want to, sh I want to shrink the top down to eight and the left down to eight. And here I want to shrink the bottom down to eight and the left down to eight. And then on here, I want to change the right to eight. And now visually, when this is all rendered, we should have a consistent amount of width between all of the widgets. And this looks good to me. I'm just going to uh, save this and we'll take a look at it just to make sure they're going on there. So now when I go into the country section, Aha, look at this. Now I've added the widgets to this section, but I didn't put an action on there for these widgets to be updated. So I have to go back and do that now. That was an item that I skipped. So if I go back into the app definition, back into behaviors, and look at what happens when I click on the chart. These different things are happening. I'm filtering the customer map. And I'm hiding, hiding and showing these sections, but I'm not doing anything with the key performance indicators. So let's add those now. We'll add those as additional actions that occur when I click on the chart. So filter widget, we're going to choose the, the count and we're going to link that by the country. So it'll limit the records going into constructing that count by the country. And we'll save that. So there's my new filter for the customer count. And then we'll add another filter for the total sales. We'll link them again by country and we'll save that. All right. So that looks good. Save, save. And now let's look at our final product. Click on the country and now we're getting information over here. Perfect. If we go back and choose a different one, it should update with different statistics. So from beginning to end, that's how you create the customer dashboard app in Valence. Thank you very much for watching.